सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यूर ओल्ड इनफ टू रिमेम्बर दैट ओल्ड एंड फेमस एंड ब्यूटिफुल टाटा स्टील कमर्शियल we also make steel right that was a tagline we also make steel so they talked about running schools welfare doing all kinds of things what is today called corporate social responsibility building up football and hockey teams but we also make steel it was a nice campaign now if you were to do a campaign like that say for pakistani army what would the tagline be so inspired from that commercial the tagline would also be but we also do soldiering right because besides soldiering which i must say they do quite well they are a good strong professional army they do all kinds of other things so now this is not some uh, this is not something that i am making up or this is not something that we are picking up from folklore these are things that have come up and have been documented in pakistani supreme court through pakistani judicial processes pakistani army is into all kinds of businesses now their businesses can include running, running wedding halls party halls or banquet halls as they are called you can find a lot of them in our country as well but those are not owned by the armed forces but this is the armed forces and their business in pakistan they also run and th- these are these are documented details in pakistan supreme court proceedings so banks bakeries petrol pumps schools universities shoe manufacture woolens manufacture apparels food processing dairying right i bought i bought i've seen match boxes saying produced by some army factory or army run business dairying stud farms cement plants insurance company one insurance company restaurants and a bank as well as i said so all of these things the pakistani army does but underlying all this also is the fact that in the pakistani army once you become an officer you become entitled to a lot and you take a lot for granted and you get a lot legally in that system but besides that you also collect whatever you can so it's a case of ram naam ke loot hai loot sake to loot uh, the big case that's now come out and the reason we are doing this episode of cut the clutter is is the expose by a website called fact focus now fact focus is a we- website in pakistan run by a, obviously a very brave pakistani journalist called ahmed nurani uh, who comes up with these every now and then and every time he comes up with an expose usually on the pakistani elite said what is the elite of the elite in pakistan but the generals but the brass of the armed forces truth to tell the admirals and the air marshals don't have so much fun it's ma- mostly the generals who have so much fun so usually his website gets blocked for some time until it comes back so today also after he came out with this expose on general bajwa general kamar javed bajwa who may just have a week or 10 days in service but is still the serving army chief right so he's come out with this big expose showing that the army chief his wife and most importantly his daughter in law have become enormously wealthy since he became the chief in 2016 now two years are crucial 2016 and 2018 2016 is when he becomes a chief 2018 is when his son gets married when his son gets married his son's name is saad siddiq bajwa when he gets married to a woman called manur sabir that is when that is when the wealth of manur sabir begins to boom also until two weeks before that she almost had nothing so say until the last last week of october she almost had nothing and then second of november she files she, she files a disclosure statement and a tax return before pakistani fbr federal board of revenue which is the equivalent of our central board of uh, direct taxes and suddenly you find eight plots here one flat there etc etc and similarly the general's own fortune has boomed after he became the chief 
Also, his wife's fortune has boomed after he became the chief. Now, I will give you a link of this website, the story that they've done. And right now, they are, they, are, they, are taking, they are putting it in different avatars. So, there's a bit of Tom and Jerry going on between Amber Durrani and the Pakistani authorities. But he's making sure that you get to see it somehow. So, I'll share a link with you. Some of this will also run on my screen as I talk. So, what is the story? So, the story is that if you look at if you look at the daughter-in-law, that is Manur Sabir, because she's at the center of it. If you look at her, then before October 2018, remember, she got married to the general's son on 2nd November 2018. Until, until the last week of October 2018, her assets were zero, or at least her declared assets were zero now obviously uh, her defense and her side's defense would be are baba uske pehle kaun se she was a general's daughter in law so she may not may not have seen the need to make any disclosure but you know any adult has to file tax returns and also asset statements so until until the last week of october her assets were zero and then they began to zoom so on 2nd november itself say on the day of the wedding or the week of the wedding her her assets went up to 127 crores in Pakistani rupees and then they kept on going higher and higher and today they are reckoned at at least 1200 crores that's minus many of the assets which may not have been valued properly for example nobody is looking at any jewelry etc etc so from nothing in four years to 1200 crores the important thing that changed in her life was that she became the daughter-in-law of the army chief general Kambar Javed Bajwa. Now, in all the declarations she made now, again, this fact focus story says that she has been at pains to say that all these assets were acquired prior to November 2016. Why is November 2016 important? Because that is, that is when General Bajwa became the army chief. So, I told you two important years, both in November, one November 2018, the wedding and 1 November 2016, when General Bajwa becomes chief. That's the reason November 29 now, he's retiring with his, on his second term. He got, he's got, he, he got a three-year term and then got a repeat three-year term. So she's been at pains to say, hey, Baba, ye to mere paas pehle se hi tha. So it looks like an interesting headline from nothing nine days earlier to being a billionaire. So nine days to being a billionaire, all it takes is marrying the chief of army staff son in Pakistan and then you also get backdated allocations. So again, the investigators suggest that all these allocations have been backdated to make it sound like she had got these earlier. Now, what do these properties that she got sort of earlier but had never told anybody include? Eight plots in what is called as DHA in Gujranwala. Gujranwala is like a medium sized, like a bit like Ludhiana. Uh, large medium sized uh, or medium large sized town in Punjab with a lot of land around it. So eight, eight plots of about one canal each. One canal is about 500 square yards. Pakistanis deal in canals when, when they talk of urban property. So if I remember correctly, about eight canals is one acre in Indian terms. And then you know two and a half acres is one hectare. Uh, this is a subcontinental disease. We measure land differently in different parts of the subcontinent. So these plots were allotted to her very conveniently in Gujranwala on October 23, 2018, nine days before her marriage. November 2, the same day, she was allotted a flat or she was given a flat in a very sexy building in Islamabad called Constitution 1. So what do I compare Constitution 1 with? Maybe, maybe, although it's in Gurgaon, not in, not in Delhi, maybe one of these Aralia, Magnolia, Kimelia type properties in Gurgaon, or if you were in Bombay, you can name any of these big towers in Bombay that various people have built where film stars and all live. So really sexy develop, development in Islamabad. What is the address? The address is one Constitution Avenue. Why? Because it's the first building on Constitution Avenue. Never mind that in building this building of this building, they've taken apart Pakistan's constitution. Why? Because the land on which this building is built was not given to build residential apartments. This was land given to build a five-star hotel. So Capital Development Authority, CDA, which is the Pakistani equivalent, I would say, of DDA, Delhi Development Authority, which I sometimes call Delhi Destruction Authority. So CDA, 
allocated this land to a businessman to build the Grand Hyatt in Islamabad. Instead of building the Grand Hyatt, he sat on this land for a long time. Finally, instead of building the Grand Hyatt, he decided to build residential apartments. As residential apartments were built, the high and mighty of Pakistan came to acquire apartments in this. So remember, there was a building like that in India, in the city of Mumbai called Adarsh. So this is Adarsh raised to the power many times over because Adarsh is still standing there, not occupied, still abandoned and God knows what will happen here. In this case, because it was a case of some Bilewe, they all got together and they've regularized the building. So she got, she got one apartment there also. Now what exactly is this one constitution avenue? Now this one constitution avenue or the Grand Hyatt development in Islamabad, this was given to a developer called Messrs BNP. Messrs BNP did not build it as I told you for a long time. So the lease was being cancelled. As the lease was being cancelled, he built and sold residential apartments. As he sold residential apartments, there were protests and the Capital Development Authority cancelled the allocation again. Now they cancelled it. They went to the, the, the builders went to the high court. The high court upheld the cancellation and then something else happened. Then the builders and the buyers went to Supreme Court. So what happened then is not what happened with others in India. Supreme Court under that infamous judge Sabir Nazir, remember we had once done a cut the clutter on him also. He who posed for fancy pictures with his family after family lunches wearing his uh, judge's wig etc etc uh, in the open, the same clown. Uh, so he regularized it. He regularized it. He said, oh, everybody is okay. They can all continue owning these apartments. They just have to pay over eight years a total of about 1750 crore Pakistani rupees. So they all got together and they regularized it. And you know why? Because, because too many vested interests were involved. So who were the other owners there besides this woman, Manur Sabir, who now married uh, General Bajwa's son? There was Imran Khan himself. High and mighty, no less, Imran Khan himself, and this was his government, right? So it suits everybody. I told you some milieu mein. It was Chief Justice of Pakistan, Nasirul Mulk, Pakistan Cricket Board Chairman Ehsan Mani, Minister who's been Foreign Minister, etc., Khwaza Mohammad Asif, and not to be left behind, Kashmala Tariq, who was Ombudsman for Protection of Women Against Sexual Harassment at Workplace. Tun sab ne liya hua tha. Then, because Imran Khan had such a big claim of fighting corruption, right? So he had got, he had really empowered. Pakistan set up a terrible institution which God Almighty and the good sense of our parliament and our politicians saved us. It's a calamity. So Pakistani set up something called the National Accountability Bureau. Now, National Accountability Bureau is a body with no accountability to anybody except maybe behind the scenes to the army or the powers that be or whoever can pull the strings. So they have enormous powers that can catch any politician, any judge, anybody, haul them over the coals, send them to jail, deny them bail. That's how successive prime ministers of Pakistan had been sent to jail. That's how Nawaz Sharif was sent to jail. Nawaz Sharif's successor was sent to jail. That's how Maryam Nawaz was sent to jail. So this National Accounti Accountability Bureau was set up to fight corruption without any quote-unquote interference from the political class. Now, why do I say that we, we dodged that bullet? Because the Jan Lokpal bill, which at the peak of the anti-corruption movement, Anna movement was plugging, and which they insisted not even a line can be changed from was precisely this bill. Because that would have created a completely extra constitutional authority, which anybody could have then used to blackmail anybody. And we may have ended up in the similar kind of mess like Pakistan. Pakistan at least, because there is so much Mili Bhagat, they are still managing to keep the system running. In our country, things would have gone, could have gone completely haywire. So, National Accountability Bureau. So who does National Accountab Accountability Bureau send out to investigate these things? They sent their FIA. FIA is the Pakistani equivalent of our CBI. So FIA is Federal Investigating Agency. So FIA Director General, he was a very straight guy and very over and through guy, right? Imran Khan had appointed him and he had been so enthusiastic in investigating cases against Nawaz Sharif on Panama deal, etc, etc. And Imran Khan loved him. And this Mr. Wajid Zia, 
the FIA DG, he started, started taking his job much too seriously. And he thought, I must investigate this one constitution avenue or this one grand Hyatt case also thoroughly. That was too difficult for Imran Khan because he had also bought a flat there. So the, what did he do in response? He summarily overnight fired Mr. Wajid Zia and appointed somebody else. So it was in this situation that she also got allotted an apartment. Now, who paid for it? We don't know as yet. That is for, that is for the Pakistani tax authorities to find out. So what's happened? The sum total of the story is in 2000, that since 2016, when the two families got tied together through marriage, jisko humare yaan kehate hai marital alliance ho gaya, right? All the matrimonial columns said seeking matrimonial alliance, right? So this was a kind of matrimonial alliance between two families which had been friends with each other for a long time in Lahore. So the kids got married in 2016 onwards, even the fortune of the Sambandhis, that is the daughter-in-law's family, also began picking up, particularly her moms. So once again, when you see this report on fact focus, and these parts will run on my screen and I will not repeat them and make this too long, you will see how her family's fortunes have gone up. You will also see how the assets and wealth of General Kamar Javed Bajwa himself, until he became the chief, his wife also had not filed a tax return. She was not a tax filer. She had never disclosed her assets. So the general's wife, Aisha Amjad, or in this case, Manur's mother-in-law, she in 2013 had declared that she had three properties. They were not very big properties. I presume that's when he may have become core commander because core commander in Pakistan is a big deal. It's like one of our army commanders. At that point, she said, so that suddenly became eight properties. And I think it was said that she didn't remember or she didn't remember to file or she didn't remember that she owned these properties. Now the properties really began to boom because to the properties, you also had a large farmhouse added in Gulberg Green, Islamabad, a farmhouse in Karachi. These farmhouses are about a thousand square yards each. Uh, then several of these DHA apartments. What is DHA? DHA is Defense Housing Authority. So in Pakistan, the armed forces, they are allocated a lot of land in urban areas or around urban areas. There they can do their own stuff. So they are a bit like public-private partnership kind of a thing or mixed usage. So you get a bunch of land. You can sell a bunch of land commercially out of this to civilians. With Use that money to build the other side or develop their own side. So that's how they become mixed. Now in Pakistan, a lot of it is just called containments. When I used to travel to Pakistan, all, all the Pakistani visas, and I think if we, get, we can find one, we'll show you a picture on the screen. All the Pakistani visas used to come with a rubber stamp on the side, not valid for containment areas. Now, which was a big problem because in a country like Pakistan, in fact, it's impossible to go any place to any place without crossing a containment area because so much of the cities are containments in Lahore. If you land in Lahore, you can't go into the city without driving through the containment area. And also a lot of the people you go to meet are in containment areas. They may not be serving defense officers, but because their housing is in containment areas, that is the history or legacy of the Pakistani army owning so much property in Pakistan. Now, Pakistani army and land, right? They've had a very interesting relationship because after 75 years of waging what was meant to be a thousand year war on India. So be careful, 925 was still left. Uh, they've been able to capture not a square inch from India, fortunately for us. But they've been very good at capturing their own land. So not only are they capturing their own land, they are also encroaching. So what will I do here? I will read, uh, I will read for you a couple of lines from a Pakistani Supreme Court uh, proceeding. And in the Supreme Court, this is the Pakistani judge. This is the pained, angry Pakistani Supreme Court judge, Gulzar Ahmed, who's saying, so far, so, you've gone so far into the sea. That's in Karachi. Now, in Karachi, there are large containment areas. There is also Masroor, the air base, right? Around Masroor, a lot of new development has come up, which is foggy development. So he says, you've gone so far into the sea in Karachi, you could build a city. Then owners of encroached Owners of encroached land at DHA, that is Defense Housing Authority, could go all the way to America, plant their flag there, right? 
and then he goes on to say and then, then he goes on to say owners of dha in fact are working how they can make inroads in india so you can capture land in india one way if not the others so if you see the research done by aisha siddiqa that indicates 12% of the land in pakistan belongs to the army now that may be 12% of arable land or 12% of urban land i am not very sure and out of this also the land that belongs to pakistani army about two thirds belongs to pakistani army's officers and i have i have details what the pakistani army gets by way of land uh, by way of legal legitimate allotment i will just read it for you major gets one flat in housing society and one dha dha is defense housing authority one dha plot preference will be by the major major saab's location so major saab has the authority to say what is his preferred location right if promoted to colonel one more plot then promoted to brigadier if brigadier has done war course right so brigadier has been to the war college or, or the equivalent of our war college which is what we have at mahau in madhya pradesh then two residential plots plus one commercial if not one residential major general right major general and lieutenant general now you really go up the value chain total irrigated land value 0.7 billion rupees 0.7 billion is 70 crore rupees so can you imagine 70 crore rupees worth of irrigated agricultural land right and if you become a core commander wow 1.5 billion rupees worth of irrigated land and 3 years in core if you are a core commander for 3 years then you get one commercial plot and one residential plot in addition to whatever you've got so far so in that situation it becomes very difficult to figure out what is regular what is irregular what is illegal what is legal what is moral what is immoral so what can i do in conclusion i shall tell you a story a true story and i shall also tell you an apocryphal story so the true story first the true story is there was this pakistani brigadier i hope he's still around Muhammad Yusuf he was a brigadier in the ISI he obviously got disenchanted for some reason so he got together with the british writer major mark atkin and wrote with him book titled bear trap afghanistan's untold story now in that book he spilled a lot of secrets that beside that's besides the point but on one of my visits to pakistan i found him i read the book and i reached his home i along with our photographer prashant panjia we reached his home and it was sure enough in the karachi cantonment area deep inside the cantonment area it was a new home still partly under construction but a huge sprawling home that will be the envy of most of our retiring chiefs and he was just a disgruntled brigadier so we chatted there he chatted quite freely he had no problem that we were, we were indian journalists who had come in and you can find this in my cover story in india today from may 15 1994 titled exporting terror and he said i said but why are you so angry if you did so much he said i am so angry because i was given nothing so i said so don't tell me your army didn't give you something they must have given you some land so he said just 500 hectares of land and when he said 500 hectares my face fell my jaw fell and he noted it he said nee nee wo unirrigated land hai so so that is the kind of sense of entitlement they entitlement they come from so that's a true story the apocryphal story is that sometimes in very early 80s when zia is very close to the americans jihad in afghanistan is going on americans offer him the f16 so he calls a meeting of his commanders after lunch so obviously everybody is not very alert and his air chief meanwhile dozes off so he sees his air chief it's a story it's an apocryphal story not a true story so he sees the air chief sort of dozing off and he says kyon bhai shameen phir le le ye f16 so the air chief wakes up with a start it is a ha sir zarur le lo corner plot hai tha that you must buy it if it's a corner plot you know why did i remember this story i remember this story because see this visual this drone picture that fact focus is used these are the plots that the general's wife has got now in islamabad's farmhouse development area farmhouse is a misnomer these are large plots plots number 70 71 the important thing is to look at plot 71 it is a corner plot so you know about if you spend all your lifetime hunting for corner plots unlikely 
ever baby that you are going to capture even a square inch from your adversary that to an adversary as strong as india